okay now we are uh, typically uh, looking at understanding uh, something more in detail on uh, the different two different types of valuations we are we have talked about the absolute and relative when i say absolute our focus is on finding the true worth now how are we doing it with our company the word is the word we are trying to use for that is the discounted cash flow kind of a mechanism in absolute let me draw a diagram simply for that in the different valuations i'll typically consider the absolute model and the relative model in the absolute model my focus is on the discounting of the cash flows whereas in the relative model the focus is on comparison so for comparison purpose i use some ratios i use ratios like p by e price to book value price to sales then there is the concept on uh, economic enterprise value by ebit or enterprise value by ebitda these are some kind of ratios which i will typically use to do the valuation to do the value of the company on a relative basis which is i'll try to compare it with its competitors or try i'll try to compare it with the industry or some kind of comparison and try i'll try to arrive at the price of this security whereas in case of absolute we are used as the word itself is saying we'll use the discounting of the cash flows so discounting is nothing but finding the present value of future cash flows whenever i use the word discounted it is nothing but finding the present value of the future cash flows that is what we are calling as discounting so to arrive at the cash flow i typically require the balance sheet and the pnl statement future because when i use discounted cash flow we are talking about the present value of the future cash flows so i need the cash flows for the future if i require the cash flows for the future i also require the future balance sheet and the future pnl statement so because i require the future balance sheet and the pnl statement there is one process for me to take the current balance sheet and the pnl statement and do the projection for the future this is one major aspect for us because i need to do the future cash flow i don't need future balance sheet future income statement but i need future cash flow but to arrive at the future cash flow be a balance sheet and income statement are mandatory because cash flow statement is derived from the balance sheet and the income statement so for that i have to make a future income statement and a future balance sheet so based on this two i'll try to make a future cash cash flow statement because cash flow statement can directly be derived from the balance sheet and the income statement so one aspect is i need to project all the statements for the future balance sheet income statement and cash flow statement again these projections for the future i'll do them based on the past because past is a good reflection of the future so for based on the past i'll use some kind of common size ratios or common size analysis or some kind of ratios at appropriate places i'll use the historical information regarding these two right we have computed these things as a part of our financial statement analysis program 
but as a part of this we are assuming that uh, the ratios are already in place they are already computed and they are in place so using these ratios we will end up projecting the future balance sheet income statement and then the cash flows so once i make the future cash flows once i get the future cash flows i have to find the present value of that present value of that is nothing but applying the time value of money factor so there should be some kind of rate at which i need to do that discounting at what rate what is the expected rate for me for each of the years so there should be some kind of a number for it and that number at which we are discounting every year is actually called as your cost of equity or sometimes we use weighted average cost of capital that is the return as a term when i say cost of capital if i have invested this much how much return i am expecting every year every investment will expect some kind of a return if that investment is in the form of a debt they will expect interest if that investment is in the form of an equity they will expect some dividends something or the other every year but something is expected right it could be in the form of interest or dividend or whatever it is but there is some amount that is expected every year on a regular basis as long as that investment exists that expected investment that expected rate of return is what we are calling as the cost of capital if it is a total capital we call it as cost of capital if it is only equity investment we call it as cost of equity so we have we have to find out the cost of capital or cost of equity use that as a discounting factor on your future cash flows and that is how you arrive at the valuation so in short if i have to do absolute valuation if i have to do absolute valuation all i require is one the future cash flows which we will get by by forecasting the future income statement and the balance sheet then i also require the discounting rate which i will get it as cost of equity or weighted average cost of capital and what is the cash flow in consideration what is that i am meaning by the cash flow there are different ways of defining this cash flow so what is that i am calling as a cash flow so then forecasting these future cash flows and based on that applying an appropriate discount rate and then doing the final calculation that is what we are calling as valuation so we just require this much of information and for each of them there are different processes now if i have to do a future cash flow as i we are talking of we need future income statement future balance sheet to project the future income statement we have to use some forecasting models because we have to talk something about the future so we may have to use some kind of forecasting models similarly if i want to know the cost of capital i may have to use different mechanisms of arriving at the cost of capital because capital may contain debt and equity so there may be different mechanisms for cost of debt there may be different mechanisms for cost of equity so i may have to understand these kind of mechanisms and then get into the calculation aspect itself whereas in case of relative valuation nothing much i just need to find out the ratios p by e p by bb p by s any of these ratios one or more of these ratios try to compare them with the industry ratios 
try to compare these numbers with respect to the industry and based on that say this should be the price of the security so now it's pure of a statistical or number crunching kind of an analysis rather than anything more p by e p by e, those relative valuation ratios are very quick to do easy to do it's more comparison okay that that stock is available at this price so this is more than that or less than that kind of thing it's a very straightforward kind of a evaluation whereas the the absolute valuation model using the discounted cash flow approach sometimes is more time consuming and more effort oriented also right so with this we'll just uh, get on to our excel sheet try to do the forecasting of our numbers based on some kind of criteria with which we'll build our build our future statements and then start off with the valuation process and yeah one more aspect the cash flow in consideration when i invest in the company when i invest in the company as long as my investment exists the only input the only only return for me is the dividend so dividend is one form of cash flow so the discounted cash flow models the discounted cash flow models actually are brought out into multiple names one is the dividend based discounted cash flow model the other mode of cash flow because some companies may pay the dividend some companies may not pay the dividend at all so if they don't pay the dividend finding out their value using the dividend model is a very difficult stuff or if their dividend paying pattern is not stable sometimes they pay 100% dividend this year next year 1000% dividend next year again no dividend very haphazard kind of a pattern then also the dividend based discounting model dividend based dcf model may not be a right model to do the value of that company so we need some alternate kind of a mechanisms that's where there is one more mechanism called as a free cash flow to the firm based model so we'll define the free cash flow right uh, uh, quickly we'll go through the process of computing the free cash flow but that free cash flow again is has to be forecasted for the future and used as a mechanism for doing the valuation or sometimes we also get into this is one of the slightly newer kind of models called as a residual kind of a model residual based valuation which takes the book value into consideration comparison of book book value versus the benefit how much more above the book value this pricing should be is it more than the book value or by what extent uh, the market price should be is worth more than the book value of it that is what is the process that uh, typically uh, is covered so the discounted cash flow model these all will come into picture after we first make the forecasted forecasted balance sheet income statement cash flow statement after all these are in place then we can use each of these concepts so first part as the first part what we will do is we'll forecast first we'll start with the income statement we'll do the forecasting of the income statement for the future then we'll look at the balance sheet then we'll make a cash flow statement all forecastings for the next few years and once the forecastings are done then we will enter into the different valuation methods because from that forecasted statements only i'll pull out some of the values and try to do each of these models so there is nothing uh, new which we'll be doing once we forecast the financial statement from those forecasted statements only we will pull out some of the data and try to use them for a different valuation mechanism so the theory is as uh, related to each of these valuation mechanisms i'll take up once we complete the 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 forecasting part on how do we actually discount all these cash flows and all 
what formulas of excel we use for doing this discountings and all that but as a first step let's focus on in terms of forecasting these financial statements all three of them right <clears throat> 